Hey guys, I'm Benjamin James Baker, also known as EG the Muslim, playing professional soccer for you for Team Evil Geniuses. And here I am to do a replay review with you and help you in your Terran versus Terran, especially in those one base situations. So let's get right on into the game. So this is a map called Kohal Compound. It's pretty new on the ladder. And uh, I'll just talk through this game with you guys, running it on two times speed and my thoughts as they happen. So start of the game, you want to start out by mineral stacking SEVs. That's immediately what you want to try and do. What this does, it just means that these closer patches, rather than having two guys on this one here, you have two guys on this one. Just means the travel distance is a little bit shorter, and that can actually get you quite a few extra minerals. By that I mean roughly 20 within two minutes into the game, which may not sound like a lot, but that can be game changing, especially in a mirror. So that's one thing I'd just like to note right at this point in the game. Try and do that as much as possible. So here I have two mineral stacks on the closest mineral patch as possible. And that's just, that's nice play. I'll see if my opponent's doing that. He did kind of do it on this patch, so he's obviously pretty decent too and does try and stack. So everybody's doing it. No matter who you play on ladder, they do try and do it. So here we are. I'm building a depot here because I kind of built it a little bit late. So that kind of sucks, but it happens, it happens. So I had to build it in the mineral line, but it didn't really block anything, it's all good. And you'll notice here I'm going for gas first against his barracks first. This is just a good build in my opinion for one-on-one -on -one maps. And the reason being, the gas or the fast gas indicates I'm gonna be going Banshee pretty much straight away. Like Banshee first comes out roughly about six minutes, hits your opponent's base at 6.30. And the only reason I do this on two player maps is, and not four player maps where I scout four positions, is because my Banshee can literally, as soon as it's out, fly over here and I know exactly where he is and it can be doing damage ASAP and I don't even need to scout or anything like that. So with that in mind, just think about what I'm gonna be doing. Okay, so harvest count wise, both very similar. I've obviously supply blocked myself a little bit, so my SV count is gonna be slightly lower for a small period of time. Getting my barracks out, and he's actually scouting here. So, <laughs> just wanna point out what this does. He is gonna scout what I'm doing, and he's gonna know exactly what's coming at him. That's all well and good. Like, that's really good for him, and I mean, I don't really need to do that right now. Uh, reason being, I'm going Banshee. That's the main threat in this game, um, especially in this matchup. So he's getting his gas, he's going for a normal build here, Rex 13 refinery or so. And um, yeah, everything's looking pretty normal for the both of us. So he will scout my base, and if he is a good player and he is a Grandmaster level player, he should know exactly what this fast gas means and what this late Rex on my means. It means that a Banshee will inevitably be coming. So while he does scout you, um, he will be able to prepare fully for what I am gonna throw at him. He does lose that SCV, so FCV wise I am ahead. Um, and I did mineral stack very well. And uh, yeah, everything's gonna be really cool at this point. He is actually making a Reaper. So he's got a Marine at the tower, he's making X expand, and he is getting a Reaper. That's good play by him. He knows that I will have a severe lack of Marines for a while, given that my barracks was late. And he's gonna try and abuse that. So um, that was a nice bit of adjusting by him in his play. Here we see that, oh, I just wanna point out. I actually made the tech lab after one Marine. Um, I felt very safe in doing that. If there was some Marauder cheese out here, I could be dead, but sometimes you have to take risks and gambles. So I made the tech lab, then I lifted it up and put the barracks in, continued making marines. I've even got a heli in here to scout for me, so I will know what is going on. And the reason I made the tech lab on the wrecks and then moved it, this starport comes down so much faster. Rather than making the starport here and then lifting it up and then plonking it on here, it's roughly like, that takes between six and eight seconds, so there's no point actually doing that. I'm making this banshee come out as fast as it possibly can right now with this build. So here we are, building this depot. Not building an SCV because I don't want to supply block my Banshee, so um, the Banshee is coming out now. Second refinery going down, and I am scouting with this heli, and he did actually see the Reaper, so um, I know exactly what's coming. I run over here for the Reaper, but he did hop in before I could uh, really react, so here we are, just SCVs chasing this Reaper. The Reaper does get two kills, but that's actually a fine trade for me. So while SCV-wise, I am a little behind because I, did, uh, I couldn't keep producing SCVs due to my Banshee coming out, it should be fine. He does have an Expo. He is getting combat shields, and combat shields make marines really good against banshees. The reason being, normally a banshee takes two hits to kill a marine, uh, but with a 10 health advantage on these marines, that soon will be, they'll be able to survive three hits. So this banshee is rendered a little bit more useless. But anyway, if we look at my base, I am obviously just playing one base, building two extra barracks, getting a reactor here, gonna be switching up my buildings and such. Um, and everything's gonna be looking pretty cool. So I do have a Banshee on the way, I have a Hellion scouting here, so I know if anything comes out of his base in my direction, the Banshee is kind of walking over here, and he does know that I was making a Banshee, so he's already trying to prepare missile turrets for this. Anyways, 
That's one SCV dead. That's two SCVs dead. Three. And then I noticed that his turret positioning was kind of funky. Building turrets on the edges of his base. Um, not sure why he was doing that rather than just in his real line. But I've already caught up in SCV kills. Or SCVs rather. So that's really good for me. And he's trying to build turrets too, which I'm not making cloak. I just run away as soon as that's up. I take no damage whatsoever from those turrets. I force these turrets to be made and I killed five SCVs. And I actually take the SCV lead here. So pretty nice for me. I'm just scouting around, killing more SCVs, making them cancel turrets, just wasting minerals in general. So this Banshee is actually doing me a lot of good right now. I even find a little nook to get inside his base. I kill more, more and more and more. So really good play. And look, he's supply blocked. Just want to point out this out again, so I'm going to be pausing. His buildings, they can't produce right now. He is supply blocked. He's 38 out of 38 against my 55 out of 59. Getting that far behind is something that should never be done when you are playing bio. You have to try and catch up as fast as possible. If I am going tanks, you need a big bio force with Stim to overwhelm that as soon as you can. And while Stim is almost done and will be done by the time my push comes, He's just not producing, and I mean, that's kind of fortunate for me, but I've killed so many SCVs and forced him to be doing other things, like trying to put up turrets, trying to space his marines out and such, that it was just something that slipped his mind and he couldn't get away with doing. Anyways, I've been totally left unpressured and I could macro however I wanted to macro, getting siege, getting tanks, my base is looking pretty saturated and everything's going really well for me. So this Banshee's still alive, still picking off marines when I can, here and there. So this Banshee, definitely an MVP in this game so far. And given that he was supply blocked so hard, he does try and put up three extra Rexes because he does, I believe he does know what is coming. And that is an all-in attempt from me. And whilst all-ins are something that are frowned upon by a lot of players, there's something that all the good players do do occasionally. It just means that you have to force your player into playing much safer than he wants to. And here we do see a stim and he does kill a tank. So here there are fights happening. So I have to siege, and this is good play by him. He's gonna try and force me to be at his base as late as possible. So while I did lose a bit, but look here, this Banshee is just wreaking havoc in the back of his base, and while it does fall, that gives me time to position over here. So just talking about what happened here. A fight happened here, I instantly sent the Banshee here to kill more SCVs, and how many SCVs have died? 15. That is a huge amount. Even just talking about mineral count, that's roughly 750 minerals of SCVs that have died. That's 750 minerals that I have extra on my army, and just in my bank, look, I'm mining completely fully here. He's mining half decently here, and his minerals are just completely savaged over here. And while he's producing a lot of marines, I'm at his door with a siege tank, a lot of marines myself, SCVs to repair, and a medevac. So things are not looking good for him. So at this point, I am sieging him down, sieging at this bunker. He is getting ready to attack me, and that's a pretty decent position by him, but he's just getting smashed. I'm targeting marines with the siege tank, making them splash in the biggest way possible. So yeah, his marines are dying here, but while my force is being cleaned up, he's definitely the guy that's losing out in this engagement, just losing tons and tons of marines. If we look at the unit tab, he's got six marines against my two tanks, 14 marines and one medevac. So I'm rebuilding again, rebuilding my force. I've got a lot of production. I even pull more SCVs. So you can see that my SCV line is pretty limited actually, or my mineral line even is. But this is absolutely fine. On a map like this, when you, do, when you have your plans set in game or set in stone, you can keep piling on pressure. Tanks are so good against Marines in these numbers. If he gets medevacs, then I'm in trouble. But I know that he's building a ton of Marines. Like, well, I haven't scanned, I don't know what's going on, in, or I have actually seen what's going on in this base. So I know exactly that I need to just keep on push pushing. And here, that was a really bad engagement for him. While he is my green kill his SVs, I know what he's trying to do, and I pull back again. And I'm gonna pull back again every time that he tries to focus on me. So I am sieging up in a good position now. This is when I can rain havoc on his bunker. This is not a position that he wants to be in. You want to make these tanks siege over here, over here, or over here, just a few times. So here, at this point, I'm gonna use my medevac for a bit of vision, and I'm gonna use this single tank to focus these SCVs. He is a good player, so he does pull back. And I believe this is actually Vile Illusion. So um, if you guys have heard of that player, he is very decent. So um, yeah, I'm moving in now, and he's getting ready. He moved in as I unseaged, so really good play by him, but it's too little too late. I'm focusing these tanks on the big clusters of Marines, so he can't really do anything. Uh, the SCVs are all falling, his SCV count's dwindling, even though my SCV count is very low too. The overall supply, the army supply, look, he's got 250 minerals worth, I've got 1100 and 400 gas worth. Even setting up a bunker outside his base, so things are looking really, really grim for him. He's even got 1000 minerals stacked up and GG, he said that Banshee supply blocked me. So, moral of that game, if you are going fast gas, and you do get scouted, I suggest that you still go for the Banshee play. You can still do a lot of damage even if your opponent knows it's coming. You can force turrets because of the scare of cloak. 
if he do, or if you do make cloak and your opponent doesn't react to that if he's building no approach so you can actually add on cloak later punish him for it because he has to use scans and if you scan for a banshee while that is a win for the scan player it's still something that kind of bites his goat a little bit so if you kill two scvs and add to cloak and got scanned and killed that's actually kind of worth it for you that's a good trade um, so just think about that. And the fact that I did force him to build turrets, that's more waste on his minerals. The Banshee eventually killed, or initially killed like five SCVs, stopped turrets being produced, then killed three more SCVs, then eventually killed seven more. Um, that single Banshee won me that game very, very convincingly. So Banshees, they are sickeningly good in TVT. You do not always need to resort to macro play. If you are a macro player, that's cool and stuff. But don't feel too worried about throwing in the all-in now and then. It means your opponents need to play more honest against you and cut less corners, and which is really, really important, especially when you're trying to be a competitive player. So I do recommend you mix up your builds in TVT. That is the way things are going. So guys, thank you for watching. If you want to tune in to more replay analysis by any of the EG players, such as myself, Idra, or In Control, go to evilgeniuses.net and check them out. Thank you very much for watching.